So now we're here with Mitch Album, who, uh, among other things, at WJR is a national uh, leader in the Michigan film industry, actually helped spawn the Michigan film industry in a lot of ways. It was your baby and you nurtured it. So we're here, to, Mitch, to talk a little bit about the news yesterday that Governor Snyder uh, plans on capping this, the film credit at $25 million, which you know, most industry people feel like is the end of well, it. Well, he's not capping, he's killing it. I mean, that, that, it's, that, that, it, it's not tenable at that amount. In fact, you're almost better off not having a film program, I hate to say it, at, at that little amount, because you won't have growth, you won't have new jobs, you won't have people sticking around. You'll just have a handful of people coming in and taking some state money for a, for a break on a film that they make. Uh, that was why we suggested that w when we created these things four years ago, we had a rate back then of, uh, I don't know if it was 10% or it, w it wasn't even in the ballpark. And we said, if you're going to do this, do it right. Jump in front of everybody, become a nation's leader. Why? Because they're not going to come here otherwise. Right. This is a gypsy business and everybody understands that. But by the same token, it's a big business and there are very few businesses that can just come into a state and start up just like that and start putting money and injecting it into the community and training people and using people on the fly. Most businesses, they come in, they have to build the plant. They have to take time to educate people to their way of doing things, all the rest of it. The movie business isn't like that. That's its curse and its blessing. Well, it worked. We went from a business of two million a year to 225 million in two years. Wow. So that's a hundred fold. You find me another business that does a <laughs> hundred fold and I'll say we should keep that business too, no matter what it costs. Right. And where would it have gone? You know, I mean, that, that's an increasing Where was it going? I know, how many, I know how much money has already been invested and planned on this film. It's more than that this year. I mean, we, we finally, as everything was going exactly on the clockwork that I told Jennifer Granholm about and Mike Binder and a couple other people who helped form this thing, first you're going to get small movies, then you're going to get slightly bigger movies, then the studios are going to get interested and they're going to come in, then you're going to start building your own infrastructure, you're going to build your own studios, own post-production facilities, eventually you'll stop giving the money away and you'll stop, start bringing more and more of it in, more and more of the people in town will be trained and qualified and they'll work on the films and you will have developed an industry, but you got to give it time to grow. Well it was going just like that and then we had this guy come in who basically looks at the world the way uh, a, a president of Gatewide Computers looks at the world. I want the best tax uh, 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 rate for my company where I exist, and that's it. Well, that's well and good for him, and that's why Gateway was located in South Dakota for all those years, I suppose. But we're not South Dakota, yeah. and we're not going to get a film industry, and we're not going to keep young people unless we have to put a little milk outside the door for the cat. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. People have been doing that forever. He came in and basically and, and misled a lot of people, including myself, face to face, uh, telling them that things were safe or it was going to be at least $100 million. And then, boom, $25 million, which is literally a drop in the bucket. And it's almost, it's almost not worth it. And, and it's, a, it's an absolute gut punch to a lot of people a lot, who have a lot more in it than just me. I mean, I have a lot of time and human effort and, and, and human equity and all that. And, 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 but, but I didn't invest millions of dollars like guys have done in building studios here that are basically going to become white elephants. So if, if there was ever a time for a sort of community action, at least people who like this business, I'm not telling every citizen in the state of Michigan, if they don't care, they don't care. But people who are affected by this need to rise up and get to their legislators and say, hey, look, okay, that was his budget. That's what a governor does. But you don't have to accept it. And we should make an exception for this particular industry. It doesn't work like other industries. And, and if we can allocate enough money for it to keep it going at the rate that it was, we can be fiscally responsible as well as keeping this industry going. Otherwise, you're going to not only going to send a whole load of people right back out of here who moved in, you are going to discourage so many citizens who, who finally thought of Michigan as a place, hey, we're grown, we got something hip, yeah. it's young, mm -hmm. it's creative, it's not just the auto business. And kids were staying here for the first time instead of immediately thinking they got to go to Chicago or New York. You're going to take all those people and you're going to slam their head on the ground and say, don't believe anything the state does for you. We look like fools fools on a national scale. We came out with this program and jumped ahead of everybody for three years and then said, that's it. We're pulling the tablecloth out and, and, and that's the kind of state Michigan is. We start things and then we stop things and we start them and we stop the them. Wall Maybe Street we'll start Journal something else. The Wall Street Journal yesterday said Michigan closes its curtains. That was the headline. And the LA <laughs> Times said, you know, get off my lawn. That's what the uh, oh. Michigan, they had a picture of Clint Eastwood with the gun and they said Michigan governor says to Hollywood, get off my lawn. That's what we look like. We look like a state that can't make up its mind, tries something, and then, and then and kills it. All because this guy's got it in his head that the only way that anything's going to work in this state is if we get business taxes lowered to a certain degree. And, 
He's really throwing a baby out with the bathwater. So there is a reverber reverberation of the effect, the Michigan effect, our imaging, right? We all saw how powerful the Chrysler ad was positively. What other businesses are going to say, I can't trust the state of Michigan because they we had this in place. It was supposed to be so many years and they pulled the plug. I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't come to do anything that had to do with the government of Michigan right now. If I saw that, why would I? And, and, and lest anybody think, well, you know, he's, he's upset because uh, it's costing. It's not costing me a dime. Okay, I'll give you a perfect yeah, example. I haven't yeah. told anybody. Okay. Uh, there's a movie about to be contracted of my latest book, Have a Little Faith, which was a story of a Detroit church here in town. Sure. All right. Nice movie deal. It's going to be very high profile. In the contract, I demanded that they film it in Detroit at the church, at the real place. And they said, that's fine. We'll come to Detroit. But I got the contract back the other day and it said, we agree to film the thing in Detroit as long as the incentives remain in place. Oh my. Well, we're going to lose that. And that film of a, of a uh, if, if this stays, this film of a book that I wrote here about a person here in a church here, whatever, will end up getting filmed in Toronto or someplace like that about Detroit. Now, does it hurt me financially? Not at all. I get paid exactly the same. I don't lose one dime over it. What it hurts is the people who could have worked in the film and the church itself who could have had that attention and, and, and the story of Detroit that needs to be told for real with real Detroiters and real Detroit in the background and not fake Detroit that's uh, somewhere in Toronto. That's a real life one example of, of hundreds or thousands of examples of what this thing cost us. Now, there's that the may go south. And some projects have already, as of yesterday, oh, oh, sure started. I, I talked to a casting director. They got a movie canceled yesterday. Because the movie business, as I said at the beginning of our conversation, is very mobile and quick. And then they and they go where they're going to be able to operate. It's very expensive to launch a movie. It's very expensive to plan a movie. And once you're in, you're into things like pay or play with actors where when you sign a contract, they get their money no matter what. No business that operates like that is going to step into a chancy environment. And we have just cast ourselves now as chancy. We may cast ourselves as dead if yeah. nothing gets done. But right now we moved into now. chancy. You know? Oh, they're gone. There's no way Detroit 187 will come back here and film again. No way. Uh, but why would they? they? They have no idea if there's money being allowed. Even, you know, if they're picked up again, they'll find another. <laughs> that'll be interesting. Detroit 187 <laughs> filmed in Chicago, you know, uh, or, or some other place where they have incentives. That, he doesn't care. And, that, and, and look, I'm not here to try to turn Rick Snyder into yeah. a different person. He is who he is. But he's not the only person who has a voice in the state of Michigan, at least right. not as I'm and concerned. And people. So we've talked about the businesses, Mitch. You know, it's the people that this is what is, you know, so v important. They, they, they grabbed this industry. They retrained themselves, went back to film school. They started businesses, training animals and prep things. I'm hearing the stories. I'm sure you're hearing the stories. Don't those stories of people that have hope, you mentioned young people, aren't those the kind of stories that lawmakers, the legislature, should really care about those jobs? Well, the legislature should care about those stories, and the people who tell those stories should be contacting their legislators. You know, a guy who has a costume shop that was just about to go out of business on account of the lousy economy and was saved by the film business coming in, a hotel that never saw any business in, in February or August, whatever, and all of a sudden had business and could hire extra employees. These are all real stories yeah. that can get repeated over and over again. Somerset well, Inn? Well, when that, Trolling, goes, when that goes away, when the business goes away, what do you, what do you think is going to take its place? Do you think because Rick Snyder is, is creating a low tax base thing for, for certain kind of corporations that that's going to help these mom and pop places? Not at all. They're going to close and those people are going to move. And there goes when somebody moves, that's another abandoned house or another house on the market that doesn't sell. That's tax base revenue that doesn't. That's why these numbers are so ridiculous, Nancy, because you can't really measure the ripple effect. How do you know how many people moved into Michigan? in the last three years because of the promise of film. How, right. many, how do you know how many people didn't leave Michigan because of the promise of film? Well, every one of those people pays taxes. They may be working as waiters right now. They may be working as real estate agents right now, but they're here because they have a dream. All right, how much of Los Angeles is supported by people who want to get in to the movie business? Not people who are in it, but they're there because they want to get into it because it's there. Well, you can't measure them. They come out with these studies in Lansing. Well, it's only yeah. worth this and it's worth that. Per dollar, they're not measuring any, they're not capturing any of that. Can't measure any of the ripple effect. Let alone the, the PR effect of rebranding Michigan and Detroit. Look at the value of that as a kind of a new Hollywood. Well, What's I, the value of a camp like that? I, the way I always explain it as I say to people, what do you know of New York? Do you know what New York looks like? Or do you know what Paris looks like? Or do you know what Boston looks like? And they go, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no. I said, well, how have you ever been there? Many times people have never been there. And I, right. now I haven't gotten to New York. I really want to go. I want to see this. I don't want to see that. I said, well, how do you know what it looks like? The movies, television. That's the only way that people know. Well, 
we were starting to get people to see different parts of Michigan. Right. Uh, I saw a film the other day where it was set in Ann Arbor, and they were talking about Ann Arbor. And it was filmed here in Ann Arbor, and they were just talking about it. And I said, you know, if that happens enough, people start saying that Ann Arbor, right? that's pretty cool. I saw that in Jumpers, and I saw it in this, Ann Arbor. I want to go there in Ann Arbor. Right. So tourism. Yeah, what, right. what better way is there to recreate how people think of you than an industry that does that on its own. You're not paying them. You're not paying the movies to, uh, oh, make a good image of us in Michigan. They're paying you. They're coming in and they're filming in your town. They're, they're, Hawaii Five-0, the TV yeah. series yeah, sure. that started back up. Do you, can you count how many people are now going to Hawaii because there's a network TV show that every week shows all these beautiful sunsets <laughs> and people run, oh yeah, Hawaii, I should go out there. They're filming, that's where they film that Hawaii Five-0 show. All right, Detroit 187 might not make people want to come here, to, but that's one show. Right. Maybe there's another one about uh, about Ann Arbor. Maybe there's another one about the Gross Point. When the next thing you know, George it becomes Clooney's hot. coming here. I yeah. mean, that's cool. and and then people want to come. So you have an, a business that creates images in people's minds of a place, and we are a place that needs image boosting. And and the uh, you know uh, the, the 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 Michigan tourism program that they have is is, is very good, but it's not enough. Right. And here you can. There's have, a lot of beautiful places. There are a lot of beautiful states. Yeah, 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 and yeah. you can only run so many commercials, right. you know. But uh, but the the Pure Michigan campaign, it's great for that. But now you could have instead of a twenty five million dollar ad campaign or whatever they've allotted to it, uh, you could have hundreds of millions of ad campaigns and movies that are being out there and seen all around the world. So it's a it's that's why it's an exceptional business, and you can't just apply a cookie cutter rule to it. And that's what Snyder is trying to do. He's just saying, well. It's a, it's, it's a tax incentive. Outgo all the tax incentives. Everything's fair and equal and simple. And I, well, that may work on a spreadsheet, but I don't live in a spreadsheet. Uh, you know, the best, the best tax climate environment in America, according to all the rankings, and would probably make Rick Snyder think this is Shangri-La, is South Dakota. <laughs> South Dakota, really? where he operated Gateway for many years. And so that's probably what he thinks is a perfect place. So no taxes and no corporate taxes and low state or no state income. Great. Well, do you want to live in South Dakota? <laughs> no. Nope. I don't want to live nope. in South Dakota. And, and, and they ended up moving Gateway out of South Dakota because you can't operate a computer company for long term in South Dakota. You don't have enough people to hire and you don't have enough connections to things. So there's more to life than just establishing a good tax rate for corporations. And one of the things was inviting businesses that would never otherwise come here. And we have that with the film business and the tax incentives program. And if we're lucky and we work hard, maybe we can sustain it. If not, we're going to kiss something goodbye and people are going to talk about the good old days when, you know, there's that little brief window of light period when people came to Michigan to make movies and, and everybody was working in them and there was some hope. And now we're just back to being a Rust Belt state with a good corporate tax structure. You know, and the, it touched such an emotional response, this issue. And we were just getting back on a roll with the Super Bowl ad that Chrysler did and, and this feel good sense, all these things. It felt like we were on our way back. And this feels like a gut punch, as you said, to a lot of uh, people here because it's the hope, it's the future. So how do you turn this around, Mitch? Um, you know, you work with a lot of the people from L.A. and know people. And, and the average person who's listening to you, uh, they want to know what they can do. Um, this is their future. This is keeping their kids by them. Well, it's, it's very simple. And there's only one thing that they, the average person can do. That is get a hold of your local legislator and say, I don't want these things to go away. In fact, I want them to stay and I want them to be permanentized or, 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 or secured so that we don't keep scaring business away. And call that person, write that person, email that person saying, I won't vote for you if you don't vote for it. Because that's all that matters in this thing is votes. This thing was passed by the legislature four years ago, whatever. That's who I went and spoke to and testified in front of many, many times. And ultimately, they had to raise their hands on it. It wasn't enough that Jennifer Granholm wanted it. The legislature had to pass it. And what it, what it became was passed by the legislature. Bipartisan. Yeah. By, well, it was, it was almost unanimous. Yeah. And now, if you want to save it, it has to be done through the legislature as well. Governor Snyder can propose a budget, but he can't impose a budget. That comes from legislators. And so if they say, well, we'll accept this and this, but we want to make an exception for this film thing, and we don't accept your $25 million pittance that you're throwing out there, what I would suggest is that they try to get them to get $150 million allocated, locked in and untouched and set for five years, and nobody monkeys with it, no matter who comes in and wants to do this or that. It's not as much as we had working with it, but $150 million would represent uh, approximately uh, $500 million in production, in, in a spend. 
if you can have $5 million, $500 million worth of business, you're going to be making the big films and the small films, whatever, and, and you'll have enough. Even and though all a the cap. other income that goes with the And multiplier. everything that comes right, with it. Right. That studios are justified. Uh, the crew jobs are justified. Retraining is justified. All that's justified at that kind of volume level. Now, our state budget is $47 billion. That's what all the money all in to run the state of Michigan. $150 million is not going to break $48 billion. It just isn't. Right. If people say, well, why accept that thing and not everything else? Because it's special. I don't know how else to say to you. Yeah. Why, why do you pick one thing over the other? Because some things work and some things are worth it and some things aren't. And, and if you have a cause that you think is just worth just as much, then you should be calling your legislators about that, too. But that's the only way that this thing can be saved is by putting pressure on these legislators to adopt a different approach to this element of the budget and saying, you know, we have our constituents to Let's serve Let's honor here. our commitment. We yeah. made that commitment. They invested, these some of these businesses, hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. I'd hate to be the guys who own those Raleigh Studios right now. Uh, $80 million. Who's coming to that? I mean, what are you going to do with a what are you going to do with a uh, studio if it's empty? You know, it's not you know, roller rink. I, I don't know what you make out of it. So you yeah. know, that's a big problem, and and they're not the only ones. I mean, you know, those are people with a lot of money. How about the the local guy who you know uh, who 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 spent his last couple thousand dollars going to a film school, or whatever, to train or to learn how to do makeup or accounting or whatever for film, and now all of a sudden that's gone. What's he got? You're going to send them out to Los Angeles? You're going to lose him as a citizen because he doesn't have a job here? So it was a total kick in the teeth, and it and it literally stops a program in its tracks by doing this. In fact, right now you can't if you call today and try to get a film made in Michigan, they'll tell you we're not taking any applications. Three days ago, no. you were welcome. What kind of way is that to run a business? That's literally like showing up to work the next day and seeing all the curtains pulled down. It's embarrassing. And that's what this guy has done without any concern over how it looks or will phase it in or whatever. Just there it is. Right. And uh, I think people need to speak out about that. Well, I think they will. And I'm glad you're putting voice to it. You, as a great writer, I'm sure this is good. Or, or maybe will you be uh, writing about yeah, this? And, I, I, uh, it'll be my column on Sunday this coming Sunday in the News and Views columns, and I'll say pretty much say everything that I just said to you. Uh, shorter, <laughs> and we have this much space. But yeah, and I hope it galvanizes people. I really do. Well, that's that's what we can do, and people can make the difference, right, Mitch? I mean, I don't want, I don't want people, people to walk away thinking it's difference. over. Nothing's over, well, right? Nothing's over until we decide it is. <laughs> Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> and it ain't over now. That's from a movie. There you go. Well, thank you, Mitch. That's great. Thanks okay. for your work. Sure. Great. No problem. Great.